Hi everyone, I'm Bill Kinney and it's the 15th of March in 2020 today and that means everybody in the, around the world is dealing with the effects of COVID-19, the coronavirus, and that means many of you, whether you are a teacher or a student, are trying to deal with trying to finish your semester here in the spring of 2020. Just want to let you know about all the resources that I have that can help you finish your semester here at Bill Kinney Math, which is my YouTube channel, and also at my blog, Infinity is Really Big. So my main goal is just to remind you of all the content that I have. And then at the end, I'll also stick around and I'll also talk about what I plan for the future. And if it interests you, I will also share some personal and even spiritual um, words of wisdom I hope that will help you to keep going in the midst of these difficult times. I'll put links to the various playlists of interest down in the description below. And while my content is mostly college and university level math, let me say at the start here that I do have a lot of things related to high school and middle school level math, and I'll alert you to those things as we go here. So what are the distinguishing features of both my YouTube channel and my blog? Why would you want to get your content from me? Uh, well, I do in-depth math content. That is the main thing. You know, this is not a slick production. This is a one-person production. And I really try to emphasize the math, the math as being the star. What's my teaching style? Well, it's cumulative. For example, I've got 174 videos helping people study for actuarial exam FM, a financial math. And these videos build on each other. So you really want to watch them in order if possible. That's one thing about my teaching style. Another thing is that I emphasize both problem solving and knowledge. Um, problem solving is you know ultimately what you might say is most important as far as helping other people around the world with the math knowledge that you have but you do need math knowledge to be a good problem solver so they go hand in hand i emphasize both intuition and rigor i try to give visuals for example visuals visuals and more visuals to emphasize the intuition but i don't skip the rigor when it seems like it's necessary and helpful in understanding I especially make animations with Mathematica, which is a program that you can do pretty much anything computationally in math and make lots of visuals. It's my favorite thing to use. All right, what is my YouTube content? I'll start with what is most popular on my YouTube channel, and that is Real Analysis Lectures, 43 of them. Uh, they're really what I call introductory Real Analysis Lectures because they really focus mostly on proving things in um, one variable calculus. Uh, they're not as more difficult as they could be. It's the last six or seven of those lectures that I get into more general stuff related to what are called metric spaces and topology. Um, one thing to look forward to here is that I will be, hopefully soon this summer, doing some more advanced real analysis lectures from what's from the textbook called Baby Rudin. So if you've heard of Baby Rudin and you want to learn about real analysis from Baby Rudin, uh, you'll want to hang on for that. Um, there are also 11 shorter videos that I do on real analysis proofs. I might add to that as time goes by as well. I've got 68 abstract algebra lectures, groups, rings, and fields being the main subjects, but it also includes Galois theory content, which is a pretty advanced and interesting subject. I've got five financial math lectures. I am always hoping to do more, but I've just been too busy. These are pretty popular as well. And like I said, 174 shorter videos on solving financial math problems to help people study for actuarial exam FM on financial math. And I've had a number of people uh, send me personal messages thanking me for those videos because then they, they use those to help them study and pass that exam. I've got 36 complex analysis lectures, if that interests you. 26 shorter videos on complex arithmetic and mathematica. 37 differential equations lectures. Uh, many other videos that I've got in differential equations video uh, as well that are maybe more problem solving focused. There's a series of five videos called Analysis of Nonlinear Systems that's pretty popular, and another series called Using Mathematica for OD ODEs, which stands for Ordinary Differential Equations. Ten videos that's pretty popular. And I, I do want to add to that, especially that second one eventually, but I just haven't had the time yet. Other, like I mentioned, ODE example videos. What else? I've got 61 Calculus 1 lectures that I made just last fall that's got AP exam AB related content, 78 Calculus 2 lectures that I actually made quite a while ago, fall of 2016, uh, that since it's Calculus 2 it also has AP exam BC related content, so this is also high school related content even though I'm teaching it in college to Bethel University students in St. Paul, Minnesota. 
18 multivariable calculus lectures. Not many people know about those. They, I made those quite a while ago, back in 2014. Um, it's not a full a semester's worth, uh, but it's the end of the semester, and it includes some of the more difficult topics, for example, like Green's theorem. 24 shorter quick pre-calculus review videos emphasizing mathematic usage, 32 videos on Mathematica and parametric curves, 10 shorter videos on multivariable calculus challenge problems, and I really enjoyed making that series. I want to continue working on that as time goes by. 23 shorter videos on probability problem solving, actuary exam P for probability. Something I made recently, just in January 2020 here, is two AP Calculus AB sample exam videos. Kind of long, I'm going through some practice exams, and I'm planning, hopefully this coming week, to make two more that are AP Calculus BC sample exam videos. Two sample gateway exam videos on differentially, differentiation and integration, that's useful for AP Calculus students. 65 introductory statistics lectures, these are non-calculus based, uh, so they're really AP, calcul AP statistics equivalent, so that would be helpful for more AP students. These videos, 55 short videos, are helpful even for middle school and even younger students. It's on foundations of arith arithmetic algebra and graphing. So I talk about the basics of number systems, then I get into fractions and decimals and percentages, and then I talk about the basics of algebra and how it's related to graphing. About 50 videos on miscellaneous topics, including one video that I'm happy with on three blue, one brown related content. That's my favorite math channel. Uh, and he did a video about dandelion spheres and my uh, video is about that and I've got a related blog post. And that is my blog, Infinity is Really Big. Seven poster articles on algebra and pre-calculus, one of which is that three blue, one brown related video and uh, blog post. 14 on calculus, that includes both Calc 1 and Calc 2 one in multivariable calculus, 16 on financial math. This includes some pretty advanced topics called duration and immunization. 10 on linear algebra. In fact, this is essentially a book that I'm making it. I'm calling it Visual Linear Algebra Online. Those posts are pretty long because it's part of this book that I'm making available for you uh, with some exercises included as well. 12 on long-term actuarial mathematics. I want to continue working on those in the future. Three of those, uh, well, three are purely on probability, and, and at least one or two of those are within the long-term actuarial mathematics umbrella. And five on real analysis. What's to come here in the future? Well, here in the spring of 2020, again, I work at Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota, and like all the sco other schools around the country, <clears throat> we are also dealing with the COVID-19 and making classes be online. So I'm going to be working on those classes content. Uh, like I said, this coming week, I'm going to try to work on AP Calculus BC practice exams. But I'll also be making videos on numerical methods. That's one of the classes that I'm teaching right now. That would include interpolation, differentiation, integration, and differential equations. And I'm also te teaching a class that's got some advanced statistics in it. Uh, we're actually at the point right now in the semester where my first few videos are going to be on simple linear regression, then I'm going to move on to multiple linear regression, ANOVA, and chi-squared tests. My blog posts this spring, I'm probably not going to have time for many, very many of them here in March, April, May, maybe one a month or so. They're going to be on that Baby Rudin book that I mentioned. Here's what it looks like, by the way. Over here, that's my copy. Uh, although it looks like it's been turned around, the words are backwards. I didn't realize that happened there. Uh, that's to help you read it and uh, do the exercises. It's, a, it's a, an advanced undergraduate real analysis text. It's more difficult than the real analysis class that I taught and put online on YouTube uh, from 2016. Uh, this is, is a, I want to help you get through this book. Okay, It's a very classic book, but it's kind of notorious for being really, really difficult. And my goal in the blog post is to help you get through it, learn how to read the book and do the problems. And I also want to do some video lectures on Baby Rudin starting this summer, hopefully, uh, in June. And that's something that I think will be pretty popular. Uh, again, more blog posts on Baby Rudin, more visual linear algebra online textbook posts. So I, I did essentially chapter one so far. I'm going to move on to chapter two. Accompanying videos I made for each section. Uh, what's summer 2021 and beyond? I do want to redo my introductory statistics course lectures. Those are, again, the non-calculus-based ones. Um, I want to sort of redo them with a new emphasis. 
Uh, I want to do some calculus-based statistics as well, probability and statistics and probability problem solving, linear algebra lectures and blog posts, dynamical systems lectures and blog posts. Actually, actually my favorite subject is dynamical systems. Okay, so and one more is long-term actuarial mathematics lectures and blog posts. That's what you have look, to look forward to in the immediate future. So let me end by just giving you some personal and spiritual encouragement if you're interested. How do you deal with COVID-19 and the fear that surrounds it? Well, you should be cautious. You should wash your hands well, for example. You should keep some space, but do not fear. Rely on God. Also, don't be a hermit. Don't spend all your time playing video games or watching movies. Make sure you reach out to each other to give encouragement to other people and to get encouragement from other people. Especially give encouragement to the elderly who are going to be alone in nursing homes, for example, or maybe in their own home, ideally through video chats, like FaceTime, for example. Make sure you personally also, if you're struggling, reach out to others and ask for help. Many of you know that I'm a Christian, and God gives me strength through faith in Jesus Christ and his word, the Bible. Now, I'm just going to end by sharing some things. I'll share some verses here. I'll start with 2 Timothy 1.7, which is an encouragement to me. This is the New American Standard Version. For God has given us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Of course, God's word can also be convicting. Listening to sermons and praying is both convicting and encouraging as well. Just this morning, 15th of March, uh, 2020, a pastor at my church, Bethlehem Baptist Church, Dave Zuliger, was preaching, and this is a passage that he uh, said in his sermon. Why is the world afraid? The reason things like coronavirus are ultimately scary comes from the fact that all suffering and disease whispers that death is real. We try so hard to avoid the tr this truth in our culture. We try to numb it by controlling our circumstances. We try to start new diets as if eating maybe enough blueberries will put off death. We binge watch TV shows to numb ourselves from the pain and the brokenness we feel around us. We busy ourselves on social media because it's easier than dealing with real life. We indulge in secret sin to make the pain go away. And a million other things. But we can't run. Death is real. We will all die. Disease and lack of control is terrifying to a world that knows deep down that it's real, but has no eternal hope. But we don't have to be like that. We don't have to stay there. If you are there this morning, this is not a condemnation. This is an invitation into hope, into the Lordship of Jesus Christ that is real right now in your life if you belong to him. As Christians, we can live in freedom from the fear of death because death is swallowed up in Christ's death and resurrection on our behalf. And finally, here's a passage, a famous one, Psalms, 9, Psalms 23 from the NIV, New and International Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm going to be praying for you all, that you stay healthy and safe, and that you can be um, a benefit to other people. Thanks for watching.